Guys, welcome back. It is Racer X, and today I am with my buddies here at Auto Nation in uh, North Richland Hills. It's on the north side of Fort Worth. I've got a pretty cool video planned, actually one I've been trying to do for quite a while. I'm actually going to compare a automatic scat pack, which I've done before, but I'm going to compare it to a manual scat pack. Not done that. So I'm actually looking forward to driving the manual and comparing it and see how the two cars stack up against each other. It should be a fun one. Also, guys, if you're new to my channel, this is the first video you've ever seen of mine or you've seen a whole bunch, make sure you do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button for me. I've got a lot of great content coming up and we are off. Well, right behind me, I have got both cars that I wanted to compare today. So right here, that is a manual. That is a six-speed Challenger uh, Scat Pack. This is actually a 50th anniversary car. You can see the hood is actually a little bit different. Both these cars are brand new. And of course, right over here, that is the automatic. That is the eight-speed automatic uh, Scat Pack in white. Both these cars, obviously, in white. Both are beautiful. Let's talk a little bit about some of the differences between these two cars, and then I'll take them for a spin and give you my driving thoughts. So as we know, when it comes to the Scat Pack, you can really spec these things out pretty much any way you want to. As I did mention, that's the 50th anniversary. This one is the regular Scat Pack. You can see the hoods on the uh, the hood on these two cars is different. Now, of course, you've got the Shaker package, you've got the TA package. Of course, you've got the Daytona and the Charger. There's 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 a ton of different packages. 1320. Now, this one uh, actually is really not spec'd out super crazy. This one actually has the cloth seats in it, um, but still a very nice place to sit. And really what it is i just want to compare that eight speed to this guy over here which is the manual now this 50th anniversary is kind of cool because obviously the hood is not only different but you do get the black uh, hood you do get the black roof you've got the deck lid in the back that's black there are just some things that are different about the 50th anniversary package i really like the inside as well the wheels are that gold school they call that gold school and of course on the inside of this car You've got, see the stitching in the 50th is pretty neat, right? It's like this orange stitching. You can see it is 50th anniversary here. You get some different gauges in the car. You've kind of got this carbon weave that's got some orange in it too. I'll kind of show you that. Um, so I really do actually like the 50th anniversary car a lot in terms of the interior, but really the big thing is six speed manual. And uh, I just want to drive the things and kind of see how different they are. Now, need I uh, forget to mention this? This is the automatic scat pack. This has the uh, the RSA2 uh, Goodyear Eagles on here in 245 width, which honestly, they probably should not put on this car because of the amount of torque it has on it. It really shouldn't matter for today's driving, but I just want to kind of put it out there. And of course, on the manual car, a uh, little bit different, right? We got the 275s on this one, and of course, a uh, little bit different tire. This is a P0 uh, Nero, so different uh, different tire setup on these two cars. But I'm not be going super crazy with it today, but I just want to show you that there is a little bit of a difference in the back tire setup on these two cars. When sitting in the driver's seat of the uh, 2020 Challenger Scat Pack, you can see there's the automatic. And, uh, you know, you can go here to your performance pages. And I actually kind of really like this. Obviously, you can select your drive mode. You can do your custom. You can go set up your transmission, your shifters, your steering, um, you know, really any way you want to. But I do like for 2020 the way that they've got this situated because everything you kind of really want is now on one screen. I think that's actually very cool. And, of course, you've got your launch control <laughs> right there ready to go as well well as your line lock. So I do really like that. I am now aboard the 2020 Scat Pack Challenger. This is the automatic car, the eight speed car. And it's just a really nice driving car. I love the fact that I can get down here and I can select uh, my different drive modes in terms of how the transmission reacts. Obviously I can go in, I can select uh, all the way up to track, which is actually the way I prefer to drive it just because it is so incredibly responsive. And it really does um, give the throttle a very quick punchy response. And with this 392 behind it, um, boy, it packs a lot of punch. I always talk about how much I love driving the Scat Pack, especially on the street. But I do want to mention this particular transmission, it is the HP70. Like I said, it's eight-speed auto, and uh, this thing actually it, it shifts really quick. It's crisp, um, and it just makes for an enjoyable driving experience. So the automatic actually features a 309 rear gear, which I think is just a perfect gear for this type of car with the eight-speed. We'll see. It gives it a lot of punch, especially when it's in track mode like this. You can. <laughs> there it goes. 
Um, it is uh, it is just the right transmission for the job in this car. Now, when you talk about the manual, uh, which we'll drive here in a second, uh, that car has a 390 gear in it. So obviously different. Of course, that is a six-speed car. So a lot of differences there. But um, definitely something to think about. And the other thing is, is that they've come so far with automatic transmissions. Obviously, being able to select your drive modes like that, it does make a huge difference in how you want to drive the car. And if you want to go consistently fast, especially if you're a track person, it used to be where you were just better off in an auto, in, a, in a manual car because you know if you were really good at shifting and rolling through the gears, uh, you could be really fast. But now automatic transmissions are so phenomenal and they shift so quick, um, you never miss a shift and you can be very consistent and very fast at the drag strip and on the street as well. These cars always manage to put a smile on your face when you drive them. Oh, they're just a lot of fun to drive. As we know, Mrs. X owns a 2019 Challenger Scat Pack, Shaker Package, but uh, this is a very familiar uh, car for me to drive and run around in, um, but the manual will be a different uh, feel altogether. So let's go try that one. Now I am aboard the manual car, the six-speed car. It essentially feels identical. Seats in this car are a little bit different. Like I said, it just depends on the trim level you select. But obviously the biggest difference here is being that I've got this uh, manual uh, lever here to kind of maneuver about. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this down the road and see how it drives. You can see the gauges in the 50th anniversary car, whether it's an automatic or a manual, are. They're pretty cool, right? They're different. And of course, when you go to the performance pages, this looks exactly like the manual car. I'm sorry, the automatic car did. I mean, there's really no difference here. You can still select your drive modes. You've got your, your line lock and your launch control, all that good stuff. Of course, the big difference is now here is the uh, the manual transmission. And one thing I did notice about this, the, the apparatus itself here, I mean, just the entire thing, it's pretty big. Like it takes up a lot of <laughs> it actually feels really large in terms of just how much room this thing takes up. And then the other thing is, is that it's not exactly what I would call precise. I'm one of those guys who really likes a very bolt action type feel and something that's very precise feel when it comes to the manuals. Um, you can see there's quite a bit of play in this, um, but it is a factory so that you could always go with something aftermarket. So let's go ahead and drive it. The clutch feel in this car is actually quite nice. It's really nice and even and smooth. And I do realize this is a factory clutch and I've driven a lot of cars that have the aftermarket clutches that are kind of just bulky and just sort of all let out at once. And those can be pretty cumbersome, but I really do like the clutch feel of this. Um, and you know, from a uh, from the perspective of, of how the thing actually shifts, um, it's actually not bad. It's pretty neutral. I will say I really like the feel of a manual. I've always been one of those guys that, um, that has respected a manual car and up until the point where I got my Charger Hellcat um, I thought the manual was really the way to go um, but there's just something about a well sorted manual that is still just so much fun they're still so relevant and uh, I just love to be able to feel that torque just when you when you hit it you can control things you just feel very connected uh, to the car and the way it drives if you are somebody that really likes to drag race <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily recommend the manual, not anymore. It's just so hard to be consistent when you're doing it. That doesn't mean you can't do it and it wouldn't be fun, but in terms of just tearing up clutches and just all the things that come with drag racing a manual, um, the autos are just better at it now. That's just the true, that's the truth. But um, at the end of the day, is a manual still a lot of fun? If you just drive on the street, um, oh hell yes it is. I absolutely love driving manuals. Um, I will say one of my favorite cars that I actually drove recently was the ZL1 uh, Camaro, the 1LE version in the manual. That still is one of my favorite cars that I have ever reviewed. And um, there's just something about that old school version of me that still just loves driving a manual car. Another quick item of note is uh, the manual is actually about $1,600 cheaper than the eight-speed automatic. So if you're conscious about budget, the manual may also be a, a good option for you there. And of course, when you drive one of these, um, there's just something so satisfying about listening to the RPM band and, uh, and just kind of letting it loose. I have to say that both the automatic and the manual version of the Scat Pack will really put a huge smile on your face. You can see I'm still grinning because it's just uh, the torque of the 392. It's just so nice for the street. And uh, so if you're a 392 person and you have a manual car, you know, just rock the thing. Just enjoy it. Um, it, it 
it may not be as fast in a straight line necessarily as the automatic car, um, just because the automatic just shifts so darn fast. But in terms of just being fun and still relevant and an enjoyable driving experience, it is every bit of that. And I also want to take a quick second and thank my buddies here at uh, North Richland Hills Dodge uh, Jeep Chrysler Ram. They're so great about letting me come and review these vehicles for you guys and give you my honest driving impressions. And I really dig this 50th anniversary car as well. So at the end of the day, what are my final uh, impressions of these two cars? Well, obviously the automatic is absolutely fantastic. Um, as I mentioned before, I mean, they've come so far with the technology in these, uh, in these new transmissions. I mean, they are just they're just faster. And uh, the way that you can set up your drive modes and everything, it just makes the cars a lot of fun and they're great to own. And plus they're great in traffic. Now, when it comes to the manual, keep in mind guys, as I mentioned before, I'm a huge proponent of a manual. I absolutely uh, love a manual transmission, especially when it's well sorted. And uh, it's just a lot of fun to drive on the street, right? So it's, it's more meant just for street driving, for something to row the gears, have fun with and just be an enjoyable driving machine. So anyway, guys, I really enjoyed this review. Let me know what you think about that in the, uh, in the comments down below, and I will catch you on the next one. So until then, Racer X.